This is a Brunch Pre-Oscars mini-podcast that contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Maestro. From director Bradley Cooper is a biopic of Leonard Bernstein. It stars Bradley Cooper and Carey Mulligan and is the first time a movie has ever been about the life of a musician. With a 79, it has the lowest Rotten Tomatoes score of any of the best picture noms and also carries an audience score of 59. Maestro uh, runs two hours and nine minutes. It is nominated for seven Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Actor, Bradley Cooper, Best Actress, Carey Mulligan, Best Original Screenplay, Bradley Cooper and Josh Singer. Best Cinematography, Best Makeup and Hairstyling, Best Sound. Maestro has the longest odds to win Best Picture at plus 15,000. So, good. I, yeah, good, <laughs> good, right, correct. I'll say it would, normally there is one movie in the uh, Best Picture crop that is my uh, get this one out of my face selection. And uh, that would be Maestro this year for me. Get this one out of my face. I'm not. I'm not going to say it's a terrible movie. I'm not going to say it's a bad movie. It's just not. Not my cup of tea. Not my yes. cup of tea whatsoever. So I, when this came out, I got a lot of Maestro is great. And as we've gotten closer to the Oscars, we've got. I've seen a lot more like Ugh, Maestro. I saw it around the time people were saying Maestro is great, and I felt I don't love this movie. It's not a bad movie. Exactly what you said. It's not bad. I also, though, maybe it's just because I'm getting old. I felt this way with Barbie. Where like I can't get too worked up about it getting nominated for Best Picture because it so is not going to win Best Picture. So like this, if it stole a nomination slot, it stole the very last one. And sure, there's some movies like... I don't know. Like, would you have rather Saltburn be nominated? I'm asking that rhetorically. Yes. Uh, no, but the answer but, is yes. Yeah. Would you rather like Saltburn, Bo is Afraid, Air, things that are in that like next kind of category? I probably would. I'll say but... yes. Yeah. So let me, I'll say yes, because at least those movies um, would classify as like sort of an outlier getting the best picture nomination spot. To me, in a big, maybe a big reason for my distaste of this movie is that it feels very Oscar baity. And I kind of hate when Oscar baity movies that aren't up to the quality of being Oscars worthy, get the spot because they're Oscars baity because they play the game. Sense? So it does. Yes, that that yeah. is all of my notes. It played the game so hard as far as Oscars bait goes to the point where I'm wondering if Bradley Cooper, and I am not alone in this, his, this specific name hasn't been said, but like, is Bradley Cooper Damien Chazelling himself, where at some point, he's going to have to just fucking run away and go away for a little while, because he is overtly trying to get an Oscar so badly, and Damien yeah. Chazelle made movies that was getting Oscars, just not best picture, but he with 12, I believe. Let's let me, I have this written down. Um, uh, Cooper has no Oscars, he has been nominated for uh 12, he has 12 total nominations in his career and has never won an Oscar. This feels the hardest. He's been like, please give me yes. an Oscar to the point where there are a lot of think pieces about Bradley Cooper now and he's gotten himself into yeah, devotees of of the what chaos show will understand what I mean when I say he's got half upon the doghouse right now because people are like Bradley Cooper you are the hot guy from the hangover and I know that you're also a good actor and I know that you like directing but you're the fucking hot guy from the hangover and just because you do something that's different from that, granted, he did Silver Linings Playbook and has been great in a lot of things, like, does not mean you're getting the fucking Oscar. So just try to have the career that you would normally have, some fun things, some silly things, some serious projects, and don't go so hard into the, I will write and direct this thing and I will star in it and I will make sure that I look the best way and blah, 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 and I will play a gay person and like, fucking breathe, baby, just breathe. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to turn this into shit on Bradley Cooper hour because I really like Bradley Cooper a lot. But I think this year has seen a bit of fall on the Bradley Cooper stock 
And for several reasons, I, I think that again, we've, we've hit on it. Like this is his really in your face attempt at getting himself onto the Oscar stage. Don't love that, especially when the product is not quite what I want it to be. And also just like some of the recent comments that he's made where it's like, brother, take yourself away from a microphone for a bit. Uh, the comments about his daughter. Do you see those? Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Like, oh man, like Bradley Cooper. I feel like everybody's rooting for Bradley Cooper, or at least they were six, seven months ago. Like, I think Bradley Cooper's pursuit of an Oscar was something that people were like, man, I hope he can get it. I, I thought a star was born was, was, was awesome. I think he's a great actor. I think that he's proven himself to be a worthwhile director, but he's being pretty derivative and pretty overt in his chase for the Oscar. Dude, like he, he's I LeBron love... jamming himself into going for his first title. You know what movie I loved that was nominated for Best Picture two years ago? What? Nightmare Alley. I love oh, yeah. Bradley Cooper in that. Yeah. That, that to me is like, that's Bradley Cooper doing the career mm -hmm. where he's doing the kind of dark, uh, weird, like uh, noir Guillermo del Toro kind of thing. That was fantastic. And that wasn't going to win him Best Actor, but that's going to be people who check that out because of Bradley Cooper are going to be like, damn. That Bradley Cooper, pretty good. They're also probably going to toss a uh, Stuhlbarg award at Cate Blanchett, but that's neither here nor there. That I can, that I love from Bradley Cooper. This, this was kind of asking for him to be put under a microscope that he might not want. Yeah, bit up his own ass, bit up his uh, own ass. I think these days. I'd like to uh, read this excerpt from uh, Alex Abad Santos in Vox for a piece titled "No One Wants an Oscar as Badly as Bradley Cooper." Maestro's Oscar campaign has shown us the real Bradley Cooper. He's a tryhard. That's the headline. Mm -hmm. Oof. Uh, where were you when you realized you knew too much about Bradley Cooper? Was it when he revealed he spent six years studying, conducting to perform as Leonard Bernstein in his uh, auteurist Netflix original film Maestro? Perhaps it was when he cried in front of Bernstein's surviving family. Maybe it was when he said his dad walked around naked his whole childhood. Or when you learned that he reportedly hates chairs and banned them on his set because they suck the energy out of people who sit in them. Bah, 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 bah. What's perhaps strange to some is that Bradley Cooper is a man who became famous for being cool and hot. It's my earlier point. And for starring in movies, Wet Hot American Summer, Wedding Crashers, The Hangover, Guardians of the Galaxy that aren't Oscar stuff. When did the guy, this sounds very uh, uh, Tucker Carlson, when did the guy who voices a machine gun toting space raccoon start caring about the interior life of Leonard Bernstein? When exactly did the bro and wedding crashers become a method actor? Why is a guy who is so good at being likable in some movies so unbelievably bad at being likable in real life? The thing is, it's the other way around. This extremely serious, try-hard man who hates chairs and loves Leonard Bernstein is who Bradley Cooper has always been, whether we like him or not. There's a lot to chew on there. There is. And I like I don't I think that's a bit unfair. Like, I, I don't think you have to put Bradley Cooper into either one of those boxes. But like and, and I don't I don't want to like I don't want Bradley Cooper's love of acting and like filmmaking to be like used against him. Like if he was in if he was in the hangover because he just wanted to be a fucking actor and this was a big, big budget blockbuster that got him on the big screen and put him in front of people. Don't fucking shame him for that. Like that was his road to getting to where he wanted to be. And if this is where he wanted to be, I wish it was someplace better, but I'm happy that he gets to do the things that he wants to do. Jay Baruchel said to us, he was like, I took acting jobs when I was a kid because I just wanted to be on like sets. I wanted right. to be around the production of movies and television and was I dying to act? Maybe not as much as I was dying to just be around movies, but that was my way there. That was my ticket in. And then I got where I wanted to be. So I always, I also make that excuse for Maroon 5. I was like, man, they made such a good album. And then they made cheap shit for a million years. Maybe they just wanted to be pop stars and their way of getting to getting discovered was making a good album. So you just don't know. I agree that he doesn't have to just do one or the other. Like I said, I love the Bradley Cooper that's doing the hangover and then doing silver linings playbook and then doing nightmare alley and kind of running the gamut. It's just something like this is so overt in saying, please like my acting. And it doesn't help him that people like Glenn Howerton exist who 
do that kind of thing in a cool way where he can play the raunchy asshole and the dickhead. But we all know Glenn Howerton's got fucking chops for days. None of us think that Bradley Cooper isn't a good actor. I think that if Glenn Howerton did Maestro and did all, like wrote it, directed it, made himself look the way that he looks, all this stuff, we'd be like, we'd say the same thing. Like this, Anybody who made this was going to look like they were trying very, very hard for an Oscar. And right. Bradley Cooper has done it after having done it a couple of times in the past, such as with The Star is Born. Yeah, and and you know the uh the like he spent six years learning to conduct or whatever is like cool. None of that shit matters if the movie isn't spectacular. <laughs> like I I hate when that becomes the 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 conversation as to like why a movie or why a, a, an individual deserves something or deserves credit. It's the ships were real, You're right? <laughs> yeah. People said that Dunkirk was incredible because the ships that they you you see they used real ships, and I remember when that came out, we were like. Who cares? <laughs> like, right. is, the movie, like, yeah. is the movie good? <laughs> right. So, like, good acting uh, from both Bradley Cooper and Carrie Mulligan, who I think Carrie Mulligan is one of my favorite the actresses in Hollywood. Um, just it, the the end result wasn't there for me. Like, it, it was not spectacular. It was kind of painful in, at times for me to get through this movie. And... Like, I'm sure it's somebody's cup of tea. Uh, I'm sure that it's beloved by uh, some people that are much older than me and had, like, much more exposure to Leonard Bernstein and that story. It's It just didn't register for me. In another year, I think that Carrie Mulligan would have better odds at best actress because, I mean, she's always good and she's very good in this, but... This is the year where Best Actress is a buzzsaw at the top. Lily Gladstone, Emma Stone, it's going to be one of those two. And if somehow anything slips through the cracks, Sandra Huller is waiting right there. She was incredible as well. This is a really, really, really stacked category. So no shot, Carrie Mulligan wins, but she continues to get nominated for Best Actress as she should. Uh, I don't think that this is really going to uh, take home a ton of hardware. It's not a great movie. It's fine. I think, though, that we kind of smelled it right of mainly being uh, taken by the overpowering Oscar bait stench. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little stuffy. What do you give it uh, on Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, I'm a, around a, uh, a three, maybe maybe a, a tick lower. Whoa, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm straight up three. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, that is not uh, terrible, but it's my, it's my nominee for Get the Hell Out of My Face of the Year. That is Pete's favorite movie, uh, Maestro.